Hey guys, Scanner Danner here with my son Caleb behind the camera as usual at my brother's shop. And today we are working on a 1992 old school Chevy Corvette. Uh, this is actually a friend of mine and he has told me that he took it somewhere because his catalytic converters were glowing red. He told me one was restricted. I'm not totally sure on, on all of the symptoms, but you know, he's got two cats in the in the um, trunk of his car that need to be replaced, but they're waiting to replace them because at least one of the cats was glowing red. And, and wherever he took it told him, rightly so, that we need to fix the reason that it's glowing red first before you replace them. So we're just gonna go, go through the system and see what it's doing and why the cats were glowing red. And um, that's pretty much all I got to go with so far. Again, it's a 92, but I do have data. I have the right adapters and cables, so we should be okay looking at data on the Vera. So let's get started. Just... All right, um, first thing is I took this for a test drive. To me, it felt like it wasn't hitting on all eight cylinders. Um, kind of hard to tell because we have some exhaust leaks. I'm not sure where. They're pretty substantial. Take a listen. That's no small leak. It's like right, right up front. We're really going to need to put this car up in the air. I hate lifting Corvettes. We need to look at whether or not it's hitting on all eight. I mean, it seems to be pretty smooth as far as vibrations go sometimes it's hard to tell on an eight cylinder engine whether or not you have a single cylinder misfire it did feel like that when i was driving it that it was not hitting on all all eight uh, some data that i don't like right away is my O2 sensors are not moving at all. Yeah, they're pretty much fixed. They're, they're single wire O2 sensors. I can only see the one on the passenger side. First thing is, with bad exhaust leaks, that can absolutely mess up your O2 sensors. Um, the other thing, these being single wire sensors, they require uh, the exhaust gas to heat them up before they become active. These things have not moved at all. From, from where we are just sitting here idling. So that's not a good thing. Um, those being in the exhaust manifolds, they should still heat up even at idle. And what we're looking at is really the bias voltage on both O2s. I don't like that at all. Um, I wanna see if I can get these to move at all. So I'm gonna raise the RPM. So we had some activity there in this in this left side O2. You see it's kind of active. Are we still in? Hang on, let me let me customize this list here. Alright, um, a couple things to point out. This does have left and right fuel trims. Um, where it says left BLM and right BLM is block learn multiplier, which is your long-term fuel trim. Uh, 128 is zero, numbers above 128 is adding fuel, numbers below 128 is taking it away. Uh, we are maxed out on the long term on the block learn at 160, that's an, ad an addition of fuel. And then you look at the right INT, this guy right here, and the left INT, and that is your short term fuel trim, uh, that stands for integrator, 128 being zero. So we're not in closed loop which is why we're at 128 on the short term you see we're in open there's your loop status right there it says open um, so really our focus is with the o2s as i was showing previously they're really not functioning at all we're not moving enough to be in closed loop we have o2 problems with this car 
and the exhaust leaks right next to those O2s are not helping us here. This left side O2 is a little bit more reactive, sort of. Just so hard to make a call uh, related to an oxygen sensor whenever you have that bad of exhaust leaks on here. I, I need to I need I need to call my friend real quick. I'm gonna get him on the phone because this we might be done with this until he fixes these exhaust leaks. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna troubleshoot an oxygen sensor problem on a car that has the manifolds that sound like they're literally disconnected. Rick Schneider. Ah, not available. All right, what to do? I think we're honestly, th I think we're done for today, Caleb. And the reason I say that is I'm, I'm not gonna attack a fuel trim problem and an O2 problem when we have clear manifold leaks right there, right, literally right there. Uh, maybe we can at least put it up in the air and take a look and that way our viewers can see. And I'm gonna advise the owner Fix the exhaust leaks, put the cats on it, then let me have it, let me look at it and make sure everything else is okay. I'm probably gonna tell him to replace both upstream oxygen sensors as well. And primarily because what you guys saw, even with exhaust leaks, what you guys saw is a lack of activity for those O2s to warm up. So what we should have seen is the oxygen sensors being where they are now, about 400 millivolts, we should have seen those O2s drop off as the sensor warmed up and even with exhaust leaks we, we would have still a functional o2 but we would have a, a a low voltage signal because of the exhaust leaks pulling fresh air in and i'm just not seeing that um these o2s took forever to do anything and they're single wire sensors and there's not a whole lot of checks you do with them other than the wiring you know of course you can have a computer problem too but uh, I, I'm okay with the exhaust work that he's going to be doing to have them replace both upstream O2 sensors, fix the exhaust leaks, and then we take over from there. Uh, as far as troubleshooting this even for a misfire, um, I think I, I was incorrect in the way um, that it felt to me driving it. I, I, let me rev this a couple more times. I, I don't, I'm not sure that it has a miss. He just needs to fix this exhaust. Then we go from there. That's gonna be the, that's gonna be what we're gonna do. Um, wait, let me, let me look at just a couple more things. Map voltage I wanted to look at, 4.8, key on engine off, start it. It's good, it's what I wanna see. Voltage dropped on the map, so yeah. Should we? take the time to put it up in the air and see where the leaks are. I, I just don't think it's relevant. What is that? What the hell is that? Why did somebody do that? I can't troubleshoot this. Yeah, so the, uh, that's the driver's side cat and you can actually see the O2 sensor in there on the side and then so if you look inside you can actually see the oxygen sensor same thing on the passenger side so you can see that they were they were starting to cut the cats off and uh yeah i mean i'm not really sure why they left the i'm not really sure the approach here you, you can't troubleshoot a fuel condition a rich condition or a glowing cat when you got a gaping hole right where the oxygen sensors are okay um, I'm still gonna have him replace these O2s, but I wanna show one more test. Since I have you guys with me, and we really can't show you a whole lot more on this car at the moment, what I'm gonna do is show you an oxygen sensor bias voltage test. So what this is gonna do, is it's gonna test the harness. So I'm just simply going to unplug the O2, and then I'm gonna jump that signal wire to ground we're gonna watch the scan tool. Ignore the min-max scale. That's a self-updating min-max min scale. But I'm just gonna take just a piece of wire because it's just what we have here. I'm gonna touch it on the signal and then I'll just touch the exhaust. Ah, that was dumb. 
<laughs> burnt my finger. <laughs> it's still pretty hot. Hold on a second. All right, so what I want to do is just show you guys uh, a circuit integrity test. So this 450 millivolt, looking at the left O2 right now, 454 millivolt bias or 450 millivolt bias. Touch that to ground and I pull it down to four. So four is essentially zero and 454 is 450. The point being, how is the wiring from that location all the way to the computer? It is perfect. It's perfect. And so um, pretty tough to call a bad O2 with a gaping hole there. I still want him to replace these oxygen sensors regardless. They're single wire sensors, they're cheap, and I want them replaced whenever this exhaust gets done. Uh, I'm not really sure um, what was going on here and why they stopped. You, you certainly can't put a hole into the, an exhaust next to an oxygen sensor and then say, hey, take this somewhere and have them troubleshoot it and find out why the cats were glowing red. I like that idea. That's a good suggestion, but you don't cut a hole in the exhaust next to an oxygen sensor and then wonder why, or, and then send it somewhere else to have them troubleshoot it to figure out why the cats are glowing red. So that's just not, not a good approach. This exhaust, unfortunately for where we are with this car and the way that it is set up, it must be, must be fixed first. And this one might be unplugged. Nope, it's not. Same test. This will be the right side O2 now. Signal wire to a ground. Not a great ground there. Let's go transmission bell housing. There we go, four millivolts. Back to 454. Nothing wrong with the harness. So at least I show you guys something, a nice quick integrity test for an oxygen sensor circuit. It can be done that easily when you have bias voltage. I'm comfortable with the wiring. Again, I'm gonna have him have the exhaust fixed the way he wants it. Replace these O2 sensors just on principle and uh, have him bring it back to us and then we'll, we'll look at it again and make sure his fuel trims look good, make sure that it's not, it doesn't have any kind of a misfire and then we go from there. And driving it, it, it sort of felt like maybe it had a single cylinder miss, but I'm not, I'm not messing around with it right now with the exhaust the way it is. I want this fixed first and then we'll go from there. So hopefully you guys at least learned something and hopefully we have a follow up for this after it's done and we can get some, some after fuel trim numbers and make sure everything looks good. So either way, thank you guys for joining us. Caleb, thanks for being cameraman and we'll see you guys soon.